First of all, I want to say um, my deepest condolences on behalf of my family and I, people of the First District, and the entire territory, and the passing of the late but great Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill Emeratus. Uh, his family has lost a great man, a, 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 his wife, a husband, his children, a father. But this nation has also lost one of the father of politics, someone who has put in over 40 years of public service. And even more than 40, because before that he was in the public service. And then he uh, came into politics and he's been representing for, for many years. Uh, he has done a lot for the territory. He has guided us through some turbulent times. I remember that he took over in 1995 due to the sudden death of uh, the late great um, also H.L. Stout and he was able to carry the ship through those turbulent times. He helped this territory to grow econo um, economically in many facets and also he was able to nurture a lot of younger politicians to bring them along. So the territory has lost a true father. Mr. O'Neill, I remember um, when I came home about 10, 15 years ago, I worked as an assistant secretary at the time, Mr. O'Neill was the Premier. And then a couple of years later, I became a Permanent Secretary. He was a Premier again. So I, I remember him to be very um, thorough, um, an action man, like things done. And you know when he calls you, you're in trouble. It's because you know instructions have been given and it's not carried out. But he'll certainly be missed. And to his family, I offer my heartfelt condolence. Mr. O'Neill brought to this institution a sense of pride, a sense of loyalty, and he knew the constitution to his heart. And he also knew the standard finance, I mean the standard um, orders, but he had also. And I think that will be missed. Um, it will be real missed because I, I want to believe that he was the only person who took this constitution to the level that I was in. And I hope someday I'll be able to walk in his shoes. I want to really say condolences to his immediate family, his wife, Aegis, and his kids, and also his grandkids. The past of Mr. O'Neill, it really is, has impacted the behavior. We've lost a founding father, so to speak. He's a character you don't really see too often. And one of the things that I really, really admire about Mr. O'Neill was the confidence that people had in him, not only local but also regionally. You know, there are difficult decisions to, to be made, but persons often defer to him because he has intellect and insight, that understanding of how to really walk through the most difficult of problems. He was like a steady hand for persons. So for a lot of persons, it's kind of like a big brother has been gone. So the, the loss, the impact, it really makes you ponder about the significance of life and people who are in your lives. Well, first of all, I'd like to offer my condolences on behalf of my family and I, and the passing and to, to the extended family. Um, it's never a good thing when you lose someone, especially someone of this stature, someone that was family oriented, someone that you know was so impactful to the territory. So I do offer my condolences, and you know as a territory we are mourning because you know we all grew up knowing Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill, especially our age, our era, and you know all the contributions he made to this territory and a whole. So you know it's it's with sadness today that we are here to to view his um, his body. It is important uh, that we look in terms of honoring such a man with over 64 years between public and uh, in um, election life. Uh, his history will be told. I, uh, I have the honor of being asked by the family to deliver the eulogy and s some actual reflections. So most of it will be captured there, but uh, for the purpose that we have, we have a, we have a, a gentleman who from 1951 at the age of 18, um, entered into the teaching profession. He went into the service, into the civil service, from uh, administrative assistance to clerk, to every level of government that there is. He held uh, posts in um, each of the ministries. He's um, he been, he, he been a real icon, one who really you can emulate in different ways in government and governance. So I would like to say I, I am better for the opportunity to have served with him, to work with him, and to be a part of his dreams and aspirations for the country.
feet. 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 Come back now, yes. Step. 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 Continue. Step. 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 It was a very, very summer month to, for me today, for the pastor, Honorable Rafti O'Neill, Mem Memory Emeritus OBE. He means so much to this territory. He was the first premier, he was chief minister, um, he, he, he did so many things. He long served as a member, I think he served for over 40 years. And for me, it was a, a privilege and a pleasure serving with him 2011 to 2015. I learned a tremendous amount uh, from him um, on the Public Accounts Committee, the work that we did there, just his demeanor in the house and just the way he upheld the institution. Speak a lot to his character um, and who the man the man he was. And he was just a humble man despite all his accomplishments. He went about his way without you know, fame or, or favor, just doing the work of the people. I mean, I think the people of the 9th District and the people in this entire territory lost a, a huge icon, a giant of a man a man who cared deeply about this territory and the people of this territory. And I'm extremely proud to have been able to serve with him. And I think we, we, we missed a good one. Uh, it's a sad day in the Virgin Islands uh, to physically see him, uh, the honorable member in, in death. Uh, is truly humbling and at the same time encouraging because he has left a legacy. Uh, my aim as a member of the House of Assembly at this time is to ensure that his legacy lives on through us. Uh, he lived a life of service. I think if we think on two words that would describe his 40 years of service to the Virgin Islands, uh, it would be servant leadership 
and humility. And I believe that it is time for us to ensure that as we seek to serve the people of the Virgin Islands, we do it in a way that would make Honorable O'Neill happy, as well as pleased uh, to see that his legacy will live on forever in the Virgin Islands. Well, today is truly a sad day. Um, we have lost a, what I call an icon, a stalwart, a man with great vision and knowledge. And this is a big loss for, for the BVI community. And I express condolences to his family, because I know along with everyone in the BVI, they are going to truly, truly miss him. I know I will truly miss him as we sat together um, in the first um, term I was elected. We sat together every day for lunch in the lunchroom and I learned a great deal about him not just we very rarely spoke about politics but about a lot of personal issues and you know I will forever cherish what I've learned from him he truly truly was a great man and would be truly missed. Anwar Neal as we all know represents history hope and strength for a public officer myself along with my wife Allison, to be here is critical because he set the foundation for us as public officers. So to pay short homage to him and also to his family is only the right thing for us to do. I think all that I, I should add to that is that Honorable O'Neill was a member of my church. And as a result of that, I know he has been a religious leader. So on top of being a wonderful public officer and a person that has done so much for this territory, he was also a Christian man. So we will miss him and we are happy that uh, on the day that we will put him to rest, we will be able to contribute in a positive way from the church. Okay, so firstly, let me say condolences to Mrs. O'Neill and all his children and his relatives on the passing of Mr. O'Neill. Uh, in terms of my reflection with Mr. O'Neill, actually I returned to the public service in 2003 and I came back to be Mr. O'Neill's private secretary. So I happened to be the second person to be appointed as private secretary to Mr. O'Neill. Working with him, I must say that it was a pleasure. Mr. O'Neill, because he grew up in the public service, he knew all about the public service and basically provided the necessary guidance. If you brought a file to him, he didn't have a minute sheet, he, he makes sure to point that out to you. If the file was too thick, he said, this file needs to create a new volume. And I really appreciated him. Those were the days I worked closely with him. Mr. Bennett Smith was the permanent secretary. Mr. Lewis Potter was the deputy secretary at the time. And it was really a joy to work with him as he provided guidance and direction for the territory. I had the opportunity to travel with him to the RIMS conference in Chicago. And also, unfortunately, the time with him was short-lived because election happened in June 2013, 23. Election was in June 2003, and the government changed. So I then moved on to be the private secretary to, be, to Dr. Smith. But I really appreciated the time with him. He was very, very knowledgeable about the territory and its history. Certainly, the Virgin Islands has lost one of its true sons of the soil. Well, first of all, Natalie, let me just take this opportunity to express again publicly my condolences to Sister Idris and the rest of the family, Abby, Esther, Jackie, Ralphie, the extended family. I think it is well known that that Mr. Oni was a very close friend of mine, a friendship that we, we developed over the years in the House of Assembly, and I had the opportunity to spend, you know, a lot of time with him in his, in his last years, and um, develop a, even a deeper appreciation for him and the service that he rendered to our, to our country. You know, I said in my tribute that that Mr. O'Neill was, he was a bridge, you know, and in fact, I, like, I said he's, he's like, it was two bridges. His first, first part of his public service life that was in administration and the second part of his public service life that was in the legislative arm of government. And, um, you know, in summary, I'd say Mr. O'Neill was a nation builder. He, 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 he loved this country, he loved the people and he committed his life to, to making it better for the people and I think that when the annals of history are written it will record that, that, that he did well and so again you know I, I, I think our, our country is a lot better for him having passed this way and he, he basically ran a good race and may his soul rest in eternal peace. Yes. Yeah, my condolences go out to the O'Neill family, to Reverend O'Neill and Abby and also to Jackie and Esther, 
and Ralphie. Uh, it is a sad loss for the territory, seeing that Mr. O'Neill is no longer with us. He was a friend of mine, and um, we have got to like and respect each other. And um, there's a lot, he's left a great legacy here. And uh, I don't think that we will see the like of him in a hurry. But nevertheless, there are people who are capable enough to carry on his legacy. Morning on behalf of my, my wife and my family, the extended Christian family, I'd like to convey our sympathy and condolences to Sister Idris O'Neill, Reverend Idris O'Neill, OB, and the entire O'Neill family on the passing of our stalwart leader of our country, uh, Honorable R.T. O'Neill, member emeritus. And to say that um, even though my tenure in the House of Assembly was eight years, in which she was <clears throat> a member of the opposition and I a member of government, I found the relationship to be very cordial and in some instances very rewarding because he was able to impart a lot of the knowledge that he held with respect to the House of Assembly of the Virgin Islands. Um, he has left a, a long lasting legacy uh, because of his service to the territory which spanned over six decades, 40 something of which was as an elected member of the House of Assembly and the people of the 9th District, Virgin Gordon and Igada. And it, it says something about uh, dedication and commitment. Um, I'm not sure that many of the elected members today may feel so inclined to, to give that level and that length of service, um, not downplaying the fact that some may not, but the fact that we have uh, one amongst us that did. And um, I would dare to say that I believe he's also one of the longest serving, was one of the longest serving members in the entire Eastern Caribbean uh, as a whole. So the dedication that, uh, and commitment that his family too has uh, made an impact on me because when you become an elected member of uh, any country, your family or your families become part of that commitment and dedication. So I want to thank them for the service that he rendered to the territory uh, of the Virgin Islands and may his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much. Detail two, present us. Rest on your arms, reverse. 